Welcome back to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to say that Starfield should have been called Midfield. Uh, is it a baseball reference? Who knows? But first, come on, <laughs> mid, that's a little rough, right? It's got a thousand planets. What? One thousand? That's over a thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot. That is that is a lot. Uh, but what Starfield has in planets, it lacks in frames. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Bethesda's Todd Howard confirming the game will be locked to 30 FPS on both Xbox Series models. I'm going to play it on PC, but still, I hate it. Yeah, it's real. Me too. Uh, Xbox owners deserve better. Sheesh. That's not all either. Bethesda's recent Starfield Direct offered a 45-minute deep dive into the game, causing many to accuse it of ha still having performance issues, having sterile NPC conversations, and boring-looking combat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah, that's what Fallout was. Uh, but unlike some other recent 30 FPS flops, this Direct also hyped up tons of folks. I've seen a lot of really positive response on the internet about Starfield. Uh, they promised thousands of fully explorable planets, lots of weird aliens, and the ability to pile a bunch of stolen sandwiches in the back of your ship. Yep, uh, Bethesda magic. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, that's, yeah, that's what we're looking at, right? Uh, it's a... Yeah. Oh, what is it going? Oh, Starfield going to be a technical mess uh, where people just want to roam around the galaxy and be little sandwich gremlins, and they don't mind the bugs. Sheesh, <laughs> that's kind of sounds like fun, uh, it, and it also sounds like Bethesda, um, but minus the mods, of course, and those are all going to come later. Uh, you know the ones. Really, the biggest Bethesda move of all this whole ordeal was Todd Howard confirming to IGN that the game runs at 30 FPS on console. And that's a technical restraint that many now just consider woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. Specifically, Howard said the sci-fi adventure will run in 4K on the Series X and 1440p on the Series S. But here's the big one. They locked Starfield at 30 FPS on consoles to ensure performance <laughs> consistency, in quotes. Uh, he added that, fortunately in this one, we've got it running great. It's often running way above that. Sometimes it's 60. But on the consoles, we do lock it because we prefer the consistency where you're not even thinking about it. Mm, consistent quality without thinking about it? Why? It sounds like Todd is describing our sponsor for Inside Games, Factor 75. Today's episode of Inside Games is sponsored by Factor, which is awfully timey because summer is here and us gamers, we're eating real good. And I don't mean literally, although I also mean literally. It's Factor after all. Got a lot of good games out. We got Street Fighter 6, we got Diablo 4, and guess what? That means you gotta free up some time to play all these games. And that's where Factor comes in. That's right, no prep. No mess, Factor cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping, so meals come together in minutes, taking all the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And that's pretty important for me. Uh, if I game hard into my hangry phase, you know, it's tempting to reach for the Doritos and the Mountain Dew, but that's not gonna get us looking trim. Grab a prepared smoothie or a keto shake for a quick snack, or heat and eat a chef quality meal in just two minutes with no prep or cleanup necessary, so you can stay focused on doing what you love to do, and we both know that's gaming. So please use our link in the description or go to go.factor75.com and use code POG inside June 50 for 50% 50 off your first box. This is pretty cool. Once you click, our description will actually update live to count up the purchases. So check it out. Better living through technology. Go to go.factor75.com and use code POG inside June 50 for 50% 50 off your first box. Thank you for the sponsorship, Factor. Last we left our story, old Uncle Todd had just broken the bad news to Xbox owners that Starfield will be locked to 30 FPS. Uh, we really want to hip fire some hot takes about that, but we will save that for a bit. We usually save that stuff for the end of the episode. We'll get there. Uh, instead, we'll give YouTuber Dreamcast Guy the first shot in a now deleted tweet. Oh, wow. Okay. He accused the game of being unfinished and that it should be 60 FPS on a $500 console. He added, keep defending unfinished games, bros. <laughs> but people did come to Starfield's defense, which I'm surprised about. Uh, most notably, an artist who worked on God of War Ragnarok. Danny Carlone, a senior staff environment artist at Sony Santa Monica, responded to Dreamcast Guy, which is a weird thing to say out loud, <laughs> writing, wanted to clarify, it's not a sign of an unfinished game, it's a choice. Oh, uh, Carlone added, 60 FPS on this scale would be a large hit to the visual fidelity. My guess is they want to go for a seamless look and less pop-in. Again, I got some takes, but I'm going to sit on them for now. <laughs> Dreamcast guy later apologized for his Starfield is unfinished take because it probably didn't end up being as popular as he thought it would be. <laughs> uh, you're totally right, that's why he deleted the tweet. And Todd Howard also pointed to the scope of the game as a reason for wanting to keep the visuals looking nice. Yeah, that's the thing that makes the most sense on its surface, pun partially intended there. He told IGN, I think it'll come as no surprise given our previous games what we go for. Always these huge open worlds, fully dynamic, hyper detail where anything can happen 
and we do want to do that. Yeah, still though, uh, the 30 FPS news comes on the heels of another Microsoft exclusive, which you all know and love, Redfall, which Microsoft showed running at 60 FPS before launch, only to release at a locked 30 FPS on the Series X and S which a lot of people hated. Uh, although they did promise to patch in a 60 FPS performance mode later for Redfall. They haven't done it yet, but they they promised it. Yeah, so hopefully they do, or that's not going to be great. <laughs> Redfall's release was a disaster, really. Xbox boss Phil Spencer apologized for it and specifically regretted the 60 FPS announcement and the subsequent rollback of it. There are also not one but two open space flight games on Xbox Series X that can both run at 60 FPS. Both No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous have had 60 FPS modes for years now. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to make direct comparisons there. Starfield's doing some things that those games don't or yeah. can't. But still, dang, <laughs> when it's sitting right <laughs> next to it and it runs a 60 FPS, it's hard not to not to draw comparisons there. Uh, but really, it's just a, it's, it's continuing to be a series of bad looks for the Xbox Series X, which was touted as the world's most powerful console. And here, the, its rival, the PlayStation 5, seems to outperform it in a lot of games, or at least offer a lot of performance features that it doesn't. I, I agree. Uh, this point was underscored earlier this year when the producers of another big name release, Final Fantasy 16, said that the PlayStation 5 was the only console powerful enough to run their game. And specifically, apparently, they were talking about the capabilities of the PS5's SSD. You know, now that I've looked at the demo for about 10 minutes, I think I get why. Because it's finally starting to do cutscenes that just jump around to a lot of different perspectives. You can't really do that in engine before. Uh, you always had to have like a cool camera motion tricking things and hiding stuff to load out assets. So I kind of get it. Uh, and that's, as far as I can tell, the first time we've seen PS5 SSDs really make the difference in a game. Interesting. So it's happening. Yeah. But not on the Series X. <laughs> well, producer uh, Naoki Yoshida told IGN, Quote, if we didn't have the memory that the PlayStation 5 has, and also the transfer speed of the SSD that the PlayStation 5 has, we would still be in development right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and to be fair to Xbox, it's not like every game runs at 30 FPS. Really, it's just a couple of high profile ones. Turn 10 Studios' upcoming Forza Motorsport already looks really clean at 4K60, and that's even in early gameplay demos. Mm, all right, so we held back because both Lawrence and I would love to talk about Starfield. What do we, you and I, Think about Starfield. I know we're going to get a lot of comments too about what what you think about Starfield. So please put them down there. We we love to see them, uh, but just don't insult us for our opinions. <laughs> That's the easy one. Oh, you can't tell them that before I get going, uh -oh. Bruce. I'm going to earn. All right, it. Lawrence. Well, you go right ahead, and I'll I'll try and and jump in uh, if I if I hear anything that I'm like, wait a minute. But I think I think Lawrence's takes are, are pretty good here. Well, I'll lead with a sappy thing because Bruce, I agree. I'm I'm heartened by how many people were actually just fundamentally excited about the trailer and what was shown. It's a little weird. Usually people's expectations are impossible to satisfy, mm -hmm. but I don't get why, I'll be honest, but that Direct did it for a lot of people. They're just hyper excited to play Starfield now. So that's great. I hope that they have a lot of fun. Uh, and, bef and, and before I get to it, I'll do a little more diplomatic posture. Uh, <laughs> I think I've come to acknowledge that Starfield is not for me, or the games that Bethesda Game Studios makes. Sure, okay. I like kind of mechanically dense uh, gamer games where you got to hit buttons and move around a lot. These are not gamer not really games. what they're going yeah, for. Yeah, these are casual now. games for sure. Yes. So as soon as I turn that mental thing, and also appreciate the fact that the Xbox platform has a lot of gamer games. You know, it's got, uh, it's got. I mean, Outer Worlds is more gamery. Mm -hmm. uh, Avowed is coming up. They showed that too. So once I sort of separate those things, but still. Uh, I don't know. It sucks, man. It yeah, sucks. It, does. it doesn't look that good to be 30 FPS. It doesn't. And even the tech of like, oh, a thousand planets, whatever. You should. It's 2023, man. We should have planets at 60 FPS. What really gets me is that it already is doing all the trade offs you'd normally have to do to get to 60. Mm -hmm. But it's like you can't be in the plane when you take off. You don't have open flight on a planet, as far as I can tell. Yeah. So you're locked to walk speed, pretty much, or jetpack speed to reduce the amount of like buffer or texture flow you have to do or whatever. That's already a move to get the like your your data pipeline in in, in process for your frame rate, I think. I would agree. I, I completely agree with you. It's uh, it, all the the way that it looks it ought to run at 60 and that should be like, oh, okay, we can't fly around because because of that. But no, it's all those things plus 30 and that's <laughs> flat. If you if you bought a Series X, ostensibly you were paying into a high tech boutique experience. And I thought they even telegraphed that. They supported 120 hertz and variable rate refresh at launch. 
Uh, so I was like, okay, cool. This is like a tech console for, for like bleeding edge enthusiasts that have like high refresh displays and want that like real gamer experience. But PS5 has patched those things in. And it it seems like more of the higher profile games use those features than the Series X has. Mm, yeah, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. To gut check myself, and and I'm I'm almost out of air here, <laughs> but to gut check myself, I actually did look up a list of a game of like supported 120 FPS games, Ooh. and Series X actually has a way longer list oh. than PS5 does. Yeah, so that's cool. It's just a bummer that it seems like there's a series like Halo Infinite, and now like well Redfall. I don't know if that was super high profile, but their biggest their biggest names don't often seem to back it up with their biggest tech. Sure. And that sucks because that was ostensibly the potential of the Series X in the first place. I completely, so I agree with you. All, all that really, really good. I don't even think they're takes, Lawrence. I think you're just kind of just stating facts generally. Um, and, you know, it's totally fine if the game isn't for you. Uh, this game is absolutely for me. I can't wait. I'm very, very excited. Um, I think it's it's funny with Cyberpunk. When Cyberpunk came out, even on console, I, would, I saw a few people play it on console and it was definitely not 60 frames a second. I was still watching it and enjoying it. I played it on PC, obviously the superior platform, um, but it, it kind of didn't bother me. And we have other examples of games that are in 30 FPS that are amazing, like Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom just came out. I was I was very skeptical about that game when it came out. I was like, oh, 30 FPS, I don't know. And it didn't matter. I played it on Switch. I played whatever, 50 hours of it, loved every minute of it. Didn't, didn't matter to me at all. Now, I do think Starfield will suffer uh, at 30 FPS versus uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom because Starfield's supposed to be a little more realistic graphics. Um, so I think that that is going to cause some issues. Uh, that's I feel like first person is also a thing. Oh yeah, I think it could you cycle between third and first person for for Starfield. It seems like it, I think yeah. I think you do. And I third person wouldn't be so bad. I do under I understand I understand why people are upset about this, but I don't necessarily like. How do I how do I put this? Zelda and Diablo. These are games that have like the scale of them. I kind of didn't really even comprehend until I played them, and I like. I was like, oh, okay, I think I understand the trade-offs that Zelda had to make because the game is so big. Now, if Starfield has that same scale, I'll be like, I get it. I understand. There are literally thousands of planets. Each one has a base. You can go there and you can talk to people. Like, there's just there's this immense scale with amazing replayability. I'll be like, 30 FPS on, on console, no sweat, Todd. It, it's fine. <laughs> However, if I go to three bases and explore four planets and I'm like, well, I feel like I beat the game, and it's running at 30 FPS, and I'm gonna be like, wow, hold on a minute. Why do they do it that way? Uh, so there's a lot of things we don't know. Um, and uh, I'm just so thankful I'm playing it on PC. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that's a really good point, Bruce. It's, I think the thing is, you talk about needing to understand the vision or the scope of a game, uh, or, or be sold on its, on, on its virtues, I guess. And that, yeah, the headspace of that, especially for Tears of the Kingdom, and especially the yeah Diablo 4 two very good examples I didn't see that in the direct and I thought gosh with 40 min like the second I saw fusing in Zelda I was like boom they got a bang like mind explode okay that's the thing mm -hmm. that that this game can hang itself on and just be an amazing experience I didn't see that in the direct but it seems like some people did the way people reacted to it they were like that's the one that's it that's the feature I needed so that's cool, and I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm trying to be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to be happy if you, you know. Hey, whatever. If the game doesn't, if it's not for you, it's not for you. It's okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, what I'm, what I think is really, folks deserve a pat on the back more. Is just being genuinely positive in comment sections, and because yeah, I was, I was rooting around. There are some people who are really trying to dust it up about, uh, about um, performance and stuff like that. But yeah, mostly it just seems like it's a, a lot of genuine enthusiasm. So that's always exciting to see. Yeah, it, it, I was when I was watching it, I was excited. Uh, and I was like, oh boy, people are not going to like this, even though I like it. And then I saw on the internet that everybody's having a great time with it. I was like, whoa, okay, all right, people are into it. So this doesn't, I don't think this has the makings of a Redfall. Because Redfall already sort of was like, had stuff against it. And then that 30 FPS news came out where it was locked to 30 on consoles and everyone's like Bleh! like just kind of like immediately shit on it so I, hopefully i don't think starfield has the red fall problem right now i i worry a little bit with how happy some people are that it does because because uh -oh. there was some there was some verbiage in the trailer that was dangerous that was like you could be whoever you want and whatever you want to do you could just go in space and do it 
And I'm like, why are you? you don't say this, man. This is not healthy they to say. They always say that. I know. They say but, that about every video yeah, game they make. I guess when, Beth <laughs> when it comes to Bethesda, though, that's the thing. Bethesda games can get away with it. I don't get it, man. They will promise the world and under deliver. And people are like, great, good shit. Crashes eight yeah, times. I don't yeah. care. I'm having a good time. <laughs> and again, I'm trying to. Uh, it's a puzzle I'm trying to figure out. I'm happy that people aren't mad. I just don't get why. It seems like there's a double standard, and somehow Bethesda Game Studios gets the benefit of it. So, but those things. It's interesting too, because those things you're describing, like it crashes eight times and it's got boring combat, and like, I mean, like at launch, Cyberpunk did that. That's true. And yeah. like, it crashed for a lot of people, and people were still having fun with it. You were having, to, I was having fun with it. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing that I I, I don't maybe maybe you liked the uh, aesthetic of Cyberpunk more than Starfield. Maybe that's what it was. Because Cyberpunk felt so much like Skyrim to me when I played it. Because it was just like so stupid. The AI was dumb and like, you would you know, like again, you glitch through the, <laughs> you glitch through the car naked and stuff like that. Like, I love that stuff. And a lot of people are like, this is supposed to be the, the perfect future RPG. And I was like, what? This is fucking Sky, it's a video game. Um, so, so to me, it looks like that. And I'm on board for both of them, Starfield and Cyberpunk. So I don't know. That's maybe look at it with that lens. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. Oh man, I, the, I, <laughs> the, the NPCs have got to be weird. God damn. If the NPCs in this game are boring, that's it. I wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, that's, but if that's they're true. if they're just kind of like weird and off, if it's just a whole universe of Oblivion guards, then <laughs> then we've got it. We got it, right? Yeah, must have I been just the hope wind. it's still there. It, it felt a little, like I wanted I wanted to see that. And they like they they crammed in the the fan right as a big old meme yeah. reference and the and the table full of sandwiches and I'm like okay cool but I want to see yeah. some weird shit I'm hoping yeah. it's in there me too um so Yami who you might know she's on Inside Games occasionally she's she's helping somebody move right now but she's in extremely excited uh for Starfield um as she said she's not going to leave her house for weeks when it comes out so she would have been here also excited about about Starfield along with me uh to offset Lawrence if you're upset at Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to ask her about it, actually. I, I mean, I could just text her, but she loves gamer games. She's like all about logistics games and spreadsheets and, and balancing budgets and city sims and stuff. So for a game like Starfield, which is, is very much like a one IQ explore the galaxy kind of game, I was curious about that. So uh, yeah, well, we'll have a nice little nice little chat about it. I'm going <laughs> to shine a light in her face. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What do you? Why do you love shotguns so much? They look so boring. Um, hey, these Inside Games patrons on our Patreon, you can support us to make videos like we just made this one. Uh, they believe that every single word Todd Howard has ever said was true. Sketchy on Patreon, Gypsy Nova, Cash Putnam, UASC Battleroy, Dana Ottman, and Jay Embers all love Uncle Todd. Oh, I got, a, I got some patrons here that are ahead of the game. Loving Todd is one thing, but these patrons have already modded some big old tits onto every moon in the universe. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Christian Morgan Anderson, James Bowser, Ryan Darabary, Not Gak, Brian Cosner, and Kyle Heaton. Thank you for sculpting the galaxy like an artist. That would probably throw off their orbit, you think? I mean, it, it would, but you know what? It'd be worth it. Didn't see any titty planets in, uh, in Starfield <laughs> Direct, did we? Oh, you will. <laughs> you will. Oh, man. Yeah, there's going to be like a genital galaxy.